Hey guys, Cam back here in the Battler Workshop. Well, I spent the last couple of weeks basically cleaning all my machines down, adjusting them, adjusting the the uh, the backlash in, in nuts and uh, gibs um, on both the the lathe and my milling machine. Um, the lathe's come up really nice. It's as good as the day I sprayed it. I think it's got a few little chips on it, a bit of wear, but uh, it looks really nice. Uh, when I gave this a full refurb when I first purchased it, I had to do the uh, the headstock bearings in this, replace those, and um, a few other things in the headstock as well, but it served me well over the years. And uh, the milling machine, I spent over a week cleaning this down, as I said, doing uh, full adjustments um, on the gibs and adjusting all the uh, backlash out of the uh, out of the nuts. And uh, it's running beautifully now. And the other little machine I've got over here is my little Targa grinder. It's a great little piece of kit, but I've never had this hub off, which has got the counterweights in the back to uh to counterweight on the uh on the grinding wheel i've always had a little bit of a, a fleckle on the surface finishes and i think that has a lot to do with the balance so we're going to try and get this hub off um i've never had it off but you can see where people have probably tried in the past to uh to lock the spindle in place they've put great gouge marks in there they've obviously had stilsons or something on there and they've used pin punches and uh, made a bit of a butcher's mess of the uh, the end of it here i've, I've cleaned all that up with a stone and uh, a file as best as i can it does have a small flap just on the back here, a couple of flaps on the shaft, so I'm going to shift it on that and then we'll try and move this and if we can't move it we'll put a little bit of heat on it and see if we can uh, we can get the thing going. It is on the left hand thread, so we'll see how we go with that. I have noticed a small little crack in here, this is actually hardened, it's probably around about uh, high 40s, low 50s as far as rock will go, a file only just manages to touch it. So this whole assembly here has been hardened, almost looks like it's been nitrided actually looking at the finish on it. And you can see a small little crack in there and it lines up where the counterweight um, grub screws are that lock the counterweights into place. It looks like someone's been a little bit over anxious with it and done it up a little bit too hard and it's just created a little tiny spread there. So uh, we'll have a look at that when we get it off. But before I start I've got to make up a small pin wrench to get onto here and we'll do this properly. So. Uh, We'll make a start. I've got, I've got a bit of stock that I found. Um, we'll make a start on that and uh, we'll see how we go. All right, guys, we'll see you in a tick. All right, guys, that's a bit of stock we're going to work with. It's um, a bit of 40 mil by, I guess it's probably about uh, 8 mil thick flat. Um, we'll give that a clean up. I'm going to uh, radius the ends off on these, take all the sharp corners off. We'll cut them off with a bandsaw, get them squared up to start with. They've been hacked off there or chewed off. So we'll get that tied up, get some um, radiuses put on. Then we're going to drill and tap two holes, M6, at 21.1 millimetre centres, which is roughly what I measured the centres on the uh, on the holes on the hub. I, uh, I put a couple of pins in there and just measured across the um, across the ODs on those a couple of times, and uh, yeah, averaged about 21.1. Um, so we'll thread those in. Then I'm going to machine a portion of these down to um, 4.5 millimeters so it should give us a fairly robust type of fit i'm also going to do a, a hole in the middle to it as well that will clear the uh, stub shaft that comes through very slightly so that this is actually sitting nice and flush on the uh, on the nut face all right we're going to get this tidied up we'll get this radius out and we'll get set up to do the uh, drilling and tapping all right so we've got him radiused up i just did that on my uh on the disc sander. Um, we've sent it up the drill, center drill, and we're going to come and um, even Stevens 10.5 millimeters. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll countersink, then we'll drill through the 5 mil and then tap it out to the 6. Right, we'll come back and drill the centre out there to clear the uh, the stub shaft. I'll just go and measure that up and see what size drill we need. Alright 
more so the stub shaft misses up at um, 15 millimeters at that point there. I've got a 5.8 drill, which is about 5.8 millimeter, uh, 15.8 millimeters, so that'll give us a bit of clearance on uh, what's sticking out. So we can get that nice and flush on the face. I don't really not normally like using uh, these drills in these um, types of chucks. They tend to grab and then they tighten up even harder and you've got to get in with a pair of stilsons to get the things undone but we'll take it very easy with this, we don't have to go very deep at all, it's just to get a mark on the end. That's every rapid tap. Right, we'll uh, get these socket head cap screws. I need to machine the uh, shank down on these a little bit to get them down to about 4.5 millimeters in diameter. So we'll go over to lay, we'll get set up, and we'll get that happening. Right, uh, take two. So that's one of our little pins. We've got two of these made up, and they fit in there quite nicely. I'm going to have to shorten these shanks up a little bit more, I think. But uh, we'll screw them into the uh, into the hand piece, and we'll see how we go with our centers. All right, so that's our jig. As far as centers go, I don't think we could have got that any better. All right, I'll measure up how much we've got to take off this and uh, we'll cut them back so that our plate ends up flush with the nut. But no, very happy with that. That's going to work out a treat. All right, we'll get that happening. Right, so our wrench has come up really, really well. It's a, a beautiful fit in there. That's nice and flush with the end of the nut as well. Right, to hold the other side, I'm going to have to use a um, thread open ender and use a bit of 25 SHS to sit up inside there to extend that arm so that I can get it to lock against the table when I'm uh, pulling this around. So I won't show you that setup, it's a bit awkward at the back, but um, we'll get this set up and we'll see if we can't get this thing to move. All right, so here we go. Yep, yeah, no. Nah. I don't want to pull that any harder. I can feel that talking fair bit. So uh, I'm going to put a bit of heat on this and uh, we'll see if we can warm it up and see if we can move it that way. I may have to put a um, pair of vice grips in here. I don't want to, but it may be the only choice I've got to try and get this thing uh, get this thing released. A little bit of heat. It's not hot, hot, but um, there's a bit of heat in there. All right, some things <laughs> you don't like to do, but sometimes you're forced into those uh, those particular positions. So we'll uh, we'll get set up with some vice grips and. Um, We'll get them clamped on here. I wrapped some memory tape around that to try and afford it some protection. 
and we'll see if we can get it moved. All right, guys, I've had to give it another two heatings. I've had to put the clamp directly on the shaft. It just kept slipping on the emery. It was doing no good at all. Um, I've given it a fair old whack and tap, and it is now coming loose. There's a bit of heat in that. I need to get that off. I'll be interested to see if there's any powdery look underneath this, like uh, someone's put some Loctite on. Oops. That's right, left hand three. Uh, there's no signs of Loctite on it. Get this clamp off. And we've galled up that shaft a fair bit getting that off. So I'll need to clean it up a bit. Won't be the end of the world, it's not a working part of the component. But, uh, a little bit of heat in that. Might get some, uh, some water and some rags and just cool that off. Right, I reckon just by feel that probably got up to about 80 degrees. I wouldn't want to go any hotter with those bearings. Alright, I'll get that shaft cleaned up and uh, I'll have a look at this. Uh, this hub. Alright guys, I've cleaned up the burrs on this. It's pretty we've had another we've never had a go at it before we made a nice mess of it, but it's cleaned up quite well. But I just want to make sure that there's no debris left behind after my filing. So I've got one of my little rare earth magnets that I use in my surveying instruments. And I'm just making sure that we've got absolutely nothing inside there. All right. Okay, I'm happy with that. Very happy with that. All right, we'll move on. I'll have a look at this hub, and uh, we'll see what's going on there. All right, guys, that's our arbor. I've given her a stone to clean it up as best as I can. This is someone's had a go at it with some Stilsons here. And that was an absolute pain to get out. And it's one of those jobs where you start off with a methodology that's going to give you the least impact, if you like. And then you move through the stages until you finally get this thing free. And um, yeah, I wasn't comfortable, but at the end, we did have to put a bit of heat into this. And I did have to put those, um, those jaws onto the actual shaft itself. And we did bore a little bit, but I couldn't see any other option of actually getting this away. So it's off now, I don't think it's ever been off. The weights don't look like they've actually been moved at all at any time. Um, I certainly can't see any movement on that. They look pretty good. So the wheels that are on there must have been absolutely spot on and uh, the people that I, I purchased it off uh, used it before. Anyway, the upshot is that I'm gonna have to um, machine up a tapered arbor to be able to balance this on with the wheel. So I'm gonna sit this up in the chuck and we'll work out what that angle is and then we can slowly start getting this uh, this arbor made up and I'm just going to do it between centers in the lathe so I've got some carbide dead centers there we'll just make it so that it's as frictionless as possible and uh, we'll see how we go waiting it up but next job we'll get this uh, we'll get this um, balancing arbor made up all right, guys, we got there in the end, but uh, yeah, it was painful for me, I can tell you. All right, guys, we'll catch up soon.